I'm ready. This is Tony. This is our fifth and final round of the night here at Friday Night Magic. This time in the feature match, we end up having Curtis LeBlanc. We just saw him with Bullis Fire win an exciting game three against Logan Suter. And, and he's returning to the room. We have Cody Napier for the first time in a long time. Well, it's his second time tonight, but he's playing Mono Blue Flash thanks to Todd Anderson, a deck list that he published here recently in an article. It's really neat how it plays. It's got 21 islands. I'm already sold. You know, so we're going to see how it goes. We're going to knock on the door and let them know that it is time to get started. This is going to be a Bolus Fires. And Curtis playing up with his sideboard there. I'm going to ask him to move it to the side. I'll be right back. And I'm going to start their clock. He's shocked in and is playing Thought Erasure. So it looks like Curtis is definitely on the play. I'm going to get rid of that Essence Capture. Yep. Essence Capture so going away. I don't understand the essence ca why getting rid of the Essence Capture, it only counters the creature side of his adventures. I mean, he had a choice to get a Brazen Borrower, which he probably would have been better off getting. All right, so he's got a top of every scryed. Thought Erasure again. So we got Cutthroat, Cutthroat, and Brazen Borrower. Right, and, yep. So Cutthroat's probably going to get flashed in here to... So Cody needs to find some counter spells here. He does got a Mew, so he's going to up ticket, and then next turn he can make a 4 4 flyer if, if Curtis doesn't have an answer. What's the plus two? Uh, up to one target creature, you can move two and go up one. down, okay. <laughs> so we're going to show the Sky Dancer for the folks at home until your next turn. Up to one target creature. So fires, first spell. Now he's got to cast the second spell. Does he have a miter Murderous Rider? And he's passing. So that. Not really good here. Curtis going down to 16. I don't think I have the 4-4 four, four flyer. It'd be amazing if I did. Oh, I do have one. <laughs> Sweet. Got the 4-4 four, four flyer there in it. So... So now Cody's just got to kind of protect against the two spells, or... I'm going to attempt to destroy all creatures from my house, three or less. So that takes care of the creatures. And I'm going to cast the Eventor side of this to destroy the Planeswalker. So... So Cutthroat and Spectral Sailor just get on there really quick. He's going to end up... Attacking for three. Sorry. Putting Curtis down to eight. He's got another Mu Lang Yang Ling. He's probably thinking about not doing that. Looks like he does have an Aether Gust main deck. And then if he has nothing the better to do, he just draws yeah. a card. I think he should have played the Mu Lang Ling and ticked it up on the Murderous Rider, so Murderous Rider can't deal any damage. I mean, two points is two I'm points, and to now he's open to well, swing in. Well, I think Cody's maybe wanting to draw more cards so they can get some flash spells in. So, op, it's going to make it so the cutthroat just gets really big. So, 
So this game might be over before Curtis can even get anything going. So Mu Lang Ling this time will probably target the murderous rider. So on to game two as he just drew lands. Can't do much with lands there. So Cody wins game one. 40k charity event. Both of them had great participation. A lot of volunteer, a lot of people donating cans, uh, canned goods, and and food that went to loaves and fishes. And I, I want to give a shout out to them. Filled with it, but we're back into the game. Yeah, we are. So end turn, casting opt. This could be a sensor, or he, he takes the two. I, I may have countered that. If I had a counter spell, I may have countered it right there. But now he's just going to play that. Well, take the two and then counter it when he goes to cast the spell itself. Yeah. Because he wanted to put down the cutthroat. Because the, him being able to ca play counter spells on Curtis's turn makes just the makes bigger. the cutthroat bigger. So we should see a counterspell fired off here. Oh, it's another cutthroat. Oh, wow. That's one way of dealing with something like that. Just... Yeah, and he could have an unsummon, which would be unique, too. I don't quite see his hand. He could have countered it. He had a hypnotic specter, or he just drew it. One in the air. And of course, Cody might be saving it for fires. Ritual of Soot's a, a strong one here. Sinister Sabotage is going to allow him to scry or surveil. Yeah, Tony's going to out Temple right now because he was able to counter that Ritual of Soot. Cody was saying Tempo's his favorite thing to do. So 10 damage here. What a life swing. What does Curtis have? It looks like he has another Ritual of Soot. Do we have an answer? So Curtis should have attacked in first to get the damage. So he's going to draw a card and then let, let the Ritual of Soot resolve. I'm going to pass. Castle Vantra is coming down so he can scry. He can also... I'm going to attempt the fires. All right. Put the fire sound as spell number one. Can I try to... Do you choose and put it either on top or bottom of the ladder? Gust, and he's going to put it on top. Yep, counter uh, red or green spell, so that's what's really neat about it. Not quite as powerful as as Vel of Summer, but does a pretty good job. So Brazen Borrower getting in there for four. Curtis is. Cast fires again. Yep. Resolves. Yep. I'm gonna attempt to cast Liliana. Liliana, Dreadhorde General. Yep. That's mine's turn two. Okay. Yeah, he had enough land to cast it, so that's really neat. So ten mana. Sinister sabotage. Still has that uh, murderous rider in hand. No, that's not murderous that, rider. It's a flyer. It's a flyer. Table passage. I'm gonna crack it. So we should see Drawn into Dreams as the first spell. Yep. Mm. 
We should have plenty of zombies. Did somebody steal all my zombies? <laughs> somebody stole my zombies. Somebody took my two two zombies. They were okay. On the other side. Okay. I was like, how did you run out of zombies? Shouldn't have. Another drawn to dreams wouldn't be okay. A bedevil, or no, that's Angras Rampage. So it looks like he got another drawn and another uh, Angras Rampage. So Cody's really riding the 2 2 flyer to get there. It's a two turn clock. Right, do we have an answer? First so the 2 1 flyer. So drawn from dreams. And he has enough for the green spell that gives him life, but I think that's stuck in his... He needs to second. really find an answer right now for the Hypnotic Sprite. Thought Eraser's not going to do it. He gets two spells. Did he, does he have a Fae, from, Fae of Wishes? Which Fae of Wishes isn't going to answer it now either. If he passes turn, he's, he's the game's over. How did he pay mana to cast Thought Erasure? He can if he wants to. It's his choice. But he can't cast another spell. That's the first and second spell. I pass. I'm going to activate this draw card. Yeah, so looks like Cody's going to win 2 0. As Curtis was unable to find an answer for the Flyers. And Cody's just sitting there going, I don't see how this is. And that's yep. the game. Curtis shakes the hand. Cody goes undefeated, so congratulations to Cody. Uh, I'm going to get him here on camera to talk about it. So, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back in a short minute with Cody, our champion of Friday Night Magic. So stay tuned. So uh, Spectral Sailor, my, one of my favorite cards, again, draws cards. That That's probably my favorite mechanic in the game. Definitely the best creature in the deck, it felt like. So. Yeah. Well, I thought your cutthroat, when you were able to be able to, to grow it, yeah, you that's know, how you close and, the game to win the game, Juicy, but Sailor, just, it's so versatile. It's been great. Mm -hmm. And just draws cards. <laughs> so Hypnotic spe Sprite, uh, again, the adventure side is pay three, counter, converted mana cost three or less. Yep. Really significant, you know, especially when you start getting, the you know, a late game and they try to get, like, murderous, murderous rider side which is three and they try to kill your creatures you nope. get to counter it and then put counters on the cutthroat or that's probably the card i countered the most today with it <laughs> yep uh brazen borrower be able to to take planeswalkers bounce them through the hand or uh artifacts or even creatures that are just kind of pesky yeah. that's the main reason i beat the red deck earlier because i bounced his enchantment that made it worth it in every attack it does one damage the cattle cut yeah i got to bounce that or Calamities. Uh, Mu Lang Ling, uh, we got to see that in game one where you were able to actually make the elemental and we had the token. I was I was so glad we had the token <laughs> in the box. Uh, you know, I love this artwork. It's one of the one of the artworks that I really like. And it was really nice to see it. Um, one time you were debating about casting it, but I think you wanted to leave up maybe possible counter spells. Yeah. So you waited another turn before Casting it and taking his murderous rider where it would deal zero damage. So, you know, sometimes there's those little trade offs, patience will work in. Uh, four on summons. On summon, obviously, to help get that tempo match. Um, they're attacking you. You blink it, put a counter on cutthroat, or just, just uh, like you were saying, the tempo. I think I, I think I bounced my own creatures more today than I bounced my opponent's creatures with it. <laughs> yeah, like they're going to go kill your creature. You don't have a yeah. counter spell. You want to get it. Bounce it back to your hand like Spectral Sailor. I'm going to bounce it back to my hand and yep. flash it back in. 
two it's, mana, it's like, hey, it's kind of like I countered that. And it's great with Brazen Borrower because you get to get, get, to get the, re the whole spell back again. Yep. And then uh, four Quench probably caught a lot of people off guard. Yeah. Turn two. Uh, usually it's like, hey, I'm casting a creature on turn two. It's not going to get countered. Uh, counter it. Like, uh, you said you didn't play against many green decks, but like, if you're on the play, you go land, land. They go land, land. They play Paradise Druid, and you go Quench. Yeah, because tempo swing. because a lot of times you want to be able to play on their turns, and you probably have okay, is this a threat or not? So you're doing that threat assessment when they announce the spell. Should I counter it or not, or can I just try to race with creature damage? You know, depending on what they're doing. So, and you know, if there's something that you wanted to protect your hand, uh, three essence captures. We talked about uh, Curtis. He kind of made a mistake taking that with a thought erasure. And in my opinion, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to speak for what Curtis's thought process is, but judging by what was in your hand and what was in Curtis's hand, he could have left Essence Capture in there and just took something else, you know, maybe a threat that you had, and just played around it. Yeah, it's a lot easier to play around too when you know I have it. I don't know really even what creatures are in his deck. I never saw any, but if you have one he wanders off, he can just wait to way later to when he's got the board control and then finish me with that. Yeah, with the Fires deck, you want to be able to get rid of things that are going to counter the the wish part of Fae of Wishes, yeah. so you can go get his Planeswalkers, and then cast the Planeswalker and start tempoing the board against you that way, trying to get advantage of the board. Which, the creature part of Fae of Wishes is actually very good against this deck, because of the 1-4 body. But. Yep. Uh, so Sinister Sabotage, just straight up counter spell. You know, it is cancel with a, a bonus, which is always great. Yep. Uh, four Ops, again, Curvage here and being able to do things on your opponent's turn. Uh, Castle Ventress is the only non-island card in it. Uh, and it's really nice because you get to scry two, set up your draws, and then 21 islands. Simple deck, a lot of multiple numbers, really good. Then we have your sideboard. In your sideboard, uh, two Dungeon Geist, probably really good. You tap down a Questing Beast. They can not They can choose to cast another Questing Beast to, get, to sack it. Or if there's another creature that's kind of annoying, you get to keep it tapped down. I would have loved to have seen you tap down, like somebody tapped a Paradise Druid, and you yeah, tap you it, it, keep it tap. Yeah. yeah. It's mainly there because it's a way to tap down a Hydro Crisis because such a big flying body is a big deal. Yeah, which, uh, again, you didn't play against any yeah. of them. A lot of the a lot of the Sultai decks are changing into uh, green-black adventures. Yep. You know, but I think I think Hydro Crash is still a card to wor to play. You know, to worry about. Now, Gadwick the Wizened. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes played with this card today. A lot of people don't. They read the card where it says pay X draw cards, but they don't read the part where it's, when you cast a blue spell, you get yep. to tap a thing. Yeah, there's more than just draw cards. Yeah, there's uh, there was two players playing Gadwick besides you tonight that were on camera and. You know, uh, shout out to Matt Fry. I hope he watches his match. He should have beat Darren in game one because of Gadwick. Darren, uh, Matt was at one. Darren had a questing beast, but Matt had a Gadwick and he had a brazen in the adventure zone. So uh, Darren, he did the right thing. He played Voraska Golgari Queen. He activated the ability to destroy the three drop, which was Gadwick, so he couldn't black block with Gadwick, but it had Matt really been thinking, he would have just flashed in bar Brazen Borrower, tapped yeah, down, creature, yep. and then attacked Darren for lethal, because he had two other Brazen Borrowers on the field, so that would have been nine damage. So, uh, Matt, watch that match, you'll see it. Now, you told me earlier today that you killed somebody with Heart Piercer. I didn't kill them, but I killed like three other creatures. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, hey, you know what, all your dorks aren't going to be able to do things. Like, there's probably a deck out there that was playing the cat, the White Castle, that lets them put one one. So Heart Piercer Bow is really good against that. Yeah, the cards for the Adventure decks because the the one drop the Innkeeper. You yeah, that lets them. Card. Yeah, because they just get so much advantage off of it, just being able to draw cards by playing their creatures. It's it, it is ridiculous. Uh, of course, two negates for control matchups. Yep. Aether Gust, four of them. This is for get those red and uh, green spells. Probably really good against Nickel Bullis. It's yeah, almost um, every deck in the format. So yep. Almost all of them have a green or a red card that you want to deal with. Yeah, like we saw you earlier with, when you were playing Joss Williams, where he played Niv Mizzet, which is yeah. uncountable, but Aether Gust puts that back on top of his library yeah. if he chooses to. Granted, it's the opponent's it choice. Top, but. <laughs> yeah. Usually it'll go on top. And then this card, probably the, the bee's knees in the blue matchups. Because. Man, I count on Auto Racer on the draw is huge. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, again, we talked about now you can shock in a land and, you know, people are still in the mindset, oh, he's going to opt. But now you have to really think, does he have a mystical dispute or in his hand? So that is uh, really good to have. It, it is it is being played in Pioneer, Modern, and in Standard. So, yep. yeah, it's one of those cards. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. Hey, yep. folks, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. As always, you're welcome to battle at the front line. <laughs>